On today's episode, we're going to learn a little bit more about keeping an eye on Windows through the Windows event log, and also how to actually figure out what caused that blue screen using some software development tools right after the bump. Okay, we've got our test machine up and running here. We've actually been doing some benchmarks on this. Um, it's got an unusual problem that I think is because the CPU is not quite perfectly seated in its socket. Um, it's got a problem that we've seen on every motherboard, every X99 motherboard that we've tested that has an X99 chipset. So from every vendor, this particular problem is not uh, brand uh, agnostic. Is not you're going to run into this problem uh, sooner or later. And the machine's booted up. Everything is working correctly, right? Well, not necessarily. Um, most people don't even look at it, but there's something called the Windows Event Viewer. Um, we're going to right-click on the Start menu and go to uh, Computer Management. Now, this is Computer Management has been there since Windows 2000, so this is not really anything special. We're going to go down to Event Viewer, and we're going to go to uh, Windows Logs. And this is sort of the, the main area. Now, if you're on server, you've also got this application and services log. There can be other stuff in there. If you click on the folder, it's going to give you this summary view. And so there's no events. Uh, if you were to expand these folders and look at this, it's like, holy crap, there's a ton of folders in here. Well, there's nothing in any of them. This is showing you that uh, right here on the, uh, on the Windows Event Viewer. Most of ordinary Windows desktop. Um, stuff is in here. Now, if you're on server, one other cool handy thing that you can do that I'll mention is you can uh, forward these logs to a server or another system to keep an eye on them, which is really handy. And as a system administrator, you totally ought to do that because you can keep an eye on things. All right. So I've opened the system log here and it just so happens at this exact moment, um, I'm, there's a lot of these errors in here that say WHEA error logger. Hmm, that's really weird. Now I just rebooted. Nothing has changed with this system. I just rebooted at about, oh, I guess it was 634 in the logs here. Now look, before then, hmm, there's not really much going on. Oh, there's a little bit from WHEA, but this is from a prior boot. So this was a boot, and then I rebooted, and then no more WHEA errors, and then I've got some other errors in here. So I'm in the system log right now. Um, there's also a, an application log and a security log and some other stuff, but we're gonna focus on system for right now. And so this is a common error uh, that we've seen on X99 systems. And this uh, sometimes is to do with PCI Express 3.0, sometimes is to do with your graphics card drivers, sometimes is to do with just the alignment of the sun and the moon and the planets. Sometimes it is actually a hardware problem. Like you can actually have a hardware problem with your motherboard or your video card or something else. Anecdotally, it seems like this shows up uh, this particular problem shows up on motherboards that have PLX bridges or PLX chips um, for their PCI Express. Don't know what that's about. I've got a couple support tickets open um, with some various companies, not not through any official channels, but just sort of through unofficial channels to try to troubleshoot this. This has also shown up some on the Linux kernel mailing list, although most people sort of chalk it up to it's supposed to do that or disable error reporting or um, uh, you know just ignore it. But I don't think it's really completely safe um, to ignore this error. And so we're going to take a look at sort of diagnosing and making some changes and doing some stuff to hopefully eliminate the error. Um, but also sort of explain, use it as a, as a vehicle to teach you about, uh, the windows event system. And so, uh, before we get to this error, let's look at some of the other errors that are in here uh, or some of the other informational messages, um, that are in here. All right. So these are warnings. It says there on the level. Uh, so let's just scroll down. All right. So other than, you know, those warnings, well, what have we got here? It's like, oh, network link is disconnected. Big deal. Who cares? There's not a cable plugged into that, but it's generating a warning in the event log. Information here. Oh, link is up at one gigabit full duplex. Now, for those of you guys that have not reinstalled, um, like in the last week, you should uh, skip to the end of your log, and I think you'll be surprised. It probably goes back to the day that you installed Windows. And so this, as a forensic tool, in terms of like figuring out stuff that's happened with your system, when you've booted it up, when it's been on, when it's been doing things, there's a lot of information in this event log. So you could figure out a lot. Now, it's not like browser history or anything like that, but application crashes and changes to the system and when Windows updates have been installed. That's all in here, so you can really... It really tells you a lot about someone's usage pattern. There's a lot of sort of meta information uh, in there. All right, so here we've got a kernel plug and play event. All right, so it's like, oh, the driver for something failed to load for 
something else. Not especially useful, but we could Google it and figure out more information about it. All right, here's an error. Oh, Ethernet is disconnected. This is the 10 gig adapters. All right, E1 Express. Yep, no one cares. All right, kernel power. Okay, so this is just some informational messages saying, hey, uh, these power states are supported. All right, NTFS. Volume is healthy. No action is needed. Informational message. All right. Ooh, this is interesting. Application pop-ups. Event ID 56. Application pop-up cannot be found. <laughs> this is a, an event message that's literally saying an application tried to pop up a message. Could not actually find the message to pop up, and so just popped up a generic error. Usually that means there's not a translation into English um, for what the error is. You don't really see this a lot in English language applications because most applications, well not most, but a lot of applications are written in English first and then translated. So in this case, this is probably an application that was originally in, in Chinese or Japanese or something that was incompletely translated into English. Although sometimes it's just an error that uh, no actual translation was written for, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so here's some boot messages. It's like kernel boot, kernel general. Event log, this is probably, oh, the event log, system uptime, seven seconds. So, yeah, there's the reboot at 6.43. And then, blam, you know, there's the Windows hardware error log. Now, let's refresh this, because I bet you we've got some more errors from the Windows uh, hardware. Yeah, yeah, all right. So, look at this, 6.48 and 12 seconds, 6.47, 6.46, 6.45. So, it's doing this two or three times a second, or a minute. It's doing this two or three times a minute. Um, which is kind of a lot. Now, it is saying a hardware error occurred. Uh, these errors are actually corrected errors. I'm not sure if it actually says that here. Oh, yeah, a corrected hardware error has occurred. Yeah, in Linux, these are reported in a very similar way, and Linux is a little more verbose than Windows, so I've sort of been having some fun with this. And so if you, for you guys that are on x99, you may be able to open up your event viewer and see these kinds of things right now. Now, what exactly the issue is, the graphics card could be loose in a slot. It may not even be the graphics card. Uh, this will tell you what uh, more information about sort of uh, which PCI slot it's plugged into. So you can move your graphics card to a different PCI Express slot and see if that makes a difference. In our case, this is actually an error reported by the root hub, um, which means that the root hub to which all of the other devices is connected is actually the device that's reporting the error. Now, in the case of a PLX, the error may have actually been generated on the PLX, uh, or the PLX may have generated the error, but the root bridge is the thing that's actually reporting the error, or the graphics card may have generated the error, but the root bridge, the PCI Express root bridge, is the thing that's actually detecting the error. So, eh, eh, it's a little squirrely sometimes. Okay, another type of error that you can encounter in this log is, oh, the previous shutdown at you know 3.31 p.m. was unexpected. Basically, that just means the computer was turned off, and so the next time you turn it on, an event will be logged in the event viewer that says, hey, the last time I was turned off, uh, it was unexpected. And so that'll go in there. Um, you will also see errors um, for when you have a hard drive that's going out. When you're a system, uh, like uh, if you've got a mechanical hard drive and it's got a bad sector on it, um, your machine will be humming along fine, and then you'll hit that bad sector, and the system will retry to read that bad sector. But that interrupts everything uh, everything else that's going on with your system. It'll sit there and try to retry and read that sector for, you know, a second or two. And that second or two may register as like a hitch. Like if you're playing a game and then the computer just, just stutters for no reason for a second or two, it may have encountered a bad sector. And so you can open up your event log and look and see if you see any errors. And it may say, oh, a hardware error was encountered on device whatever, or oh, a bad sector was encountered, or there may be a clue as to why that hitch occurred in your event viewer. Um, it's not always the case. I mean, when you're playing a game and something hitches, it could be a million different things. But this is why I'm showing you the event viewer, because if there's something that's logged, it's going to be in here. I mean, there's all kinds of crap in here that doesn't even matter, but there's actually good stuff in here that is uh, useful to know and sort of useful to be aware of. So we've got, you know, some other stuff here. It's like, oh, the system started here, another reboot, more PCI Express errors. Now you notice that even though we've got pages and pages of warnings, there's no actual errors. Um, an uncorrectable error. Uncorrectable errors are the most egregious because an uncorrectable error means that there was an error and it couldn't be corrected and because of that there's bad data floating around there somewhere. It stands to reason that if you have a whole bunch of, now look at this one, like through here 
it's happening multiple times per second. And so this is, uh, you know, us fiddling with it. And this is us, uh, you know, <laughs> sort of pissing off the badger and having everything go nuts. And this is just trying some different parameters in the UEFI and, you know, trying some other different things. We've got one informational message in here. It's like, oh, background intelligence transfer service. Totally not related to anything. Just a random informational message saying, hey, this service that's on Windows started. It doesn't mean anything. All right. So when this, when this system was first set up, when this system was first installed, look at this. It's completely insane. We're getting hundreds or thousands of errors per second. This was actually owing to not having the correct chipset drivers installed. Oops. Now, these were corrected errors, but by not having the, the correct chipset drivers installed, it seemed to be causing some kind of a, a problem with PCI Express 3.0. But again, there were no uncorrected errors, and so you never really felt it on the desktop. Like, you know, he boots up, it seems like everything's running fine, but if you actually go to the Windows Event Viewer, there's all this crap in the Windows Event Viewer saying, hey, stuff's all over the place, I don't even know what's going on, what's happening, and this is all owing to a... Um, a driver that was not installed correctly in this case because uh, there were no chipset drivers at all but that's why we were getting thousands of errors per second which is kind of a lot of errors logging these errors in the background too can also chew up system resources um the, the windows event logging process is uh not the most elegant one and it's not the most efficient one and so if your system is actually generating uh hundreds or thousands of entries per second in the windows event viewer um, just even if you've got a multi-core system, just because of the locking involved in the, the thread synchronization there, it is going to be a fairly significant performance hit in some cases. It's also true that the Windows Event Viewer tries to do a disk flush every time um, every time it's logging something because it doesn't know. And so if the computer's about to crash, it's trying to get as much stuff on disk as possible so that if it does crash, at least that stuff gets written out and maybe the blue screen can finish handling whatever was in queue to be written to the event log and, and that sort of thing. Um, so that when the computer starts back up, the person that's looking at the event log can maybe troubleshoot it. So you'll see errors sometimes too, like distributed comms, like the server, something did not register with DCOM and the specific required timeout. In the context of this error message, a server is does not mean like a server on the internet. Server means that it was a process or a program on this computer that uh, registers an interface through which other programs can talk to that program. And so something went wrong here where some program was trying to communicate with another program and the other program just wasn't communicating. And so that isn't actually running. DCOM is a sort of an old architectural feature of Windows for inter-program communication. Um, and you will see stuff like this in the background. Whether or not it's actually anything serious or just, just Windows being Windows, uh, that is up to you to figure out and, and sort of go through in your troubleshooting process. So right now the task at hand is what the heck is this WHEA error and what can we do about it? Well, let's start by checking device manager and seeing if we have any unidentified devices. Hmm, I've got one 690 LC. All right. How do we, you know, what the heck is this? All right. Let's go to details. Let's go to hardware IDs. All right. So that's a USB device. It's a USB device. We don't care. USB devices will not really cause these types of errors. Tell you what, let's reboot and let's go into the BIOS, the UEFI, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we're in the UEFI. Now, there's no overclock. Overclocking can also create a situation where, you know, even though we don't have error correcting memory or an error correcting CPU, you know, we were seeing PCI Express errors being corrected by the system. That's owing to the new platform. It's so fast, it's crazy. It's got to have error correction um, to deal with, with uh, this, that, and the other. It's also true that if you were overclocking, it would probably be a good idea to disable overclocking and see if you are still getting error messages in the Windows event log. If you were overclocking and you were getting messages in the event log and you turn off the overclock and you're not getting the messages anymore, chances are that's not a stable overclock because eventually you'll produce an uncorrectable error and eventually you'll get a blue screen, Windows will crash, you know, whatever. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. All right, so what we're going to do is look through the UEFI, and the first thing we're going to do is look for PCI Express 3.0. Okay, so we actually have some several options here that are, are that are maybe relevant to what we've got going on. Uh, PCIe ASPM is like PCI Express uh, Power Management. 
Um, that can also play in here. The PCI Express power management can show up like as if it's an error to the Windows hardware error reporting just because the link speed is changing. It's like, oh, it's a fast link speed. Oh, it's a slow link speed. So we may need to play with these settings as well, which may make the problem worse or may cure it. For now, we're gonna set everything for Gen 2, everything in the whole system, just because we can. And that's all we're gonna do. And we're gonna reboot, and we're rebooting. All right, we're back in Windows, almost. Let's go to Computer Management. Oops, Event Viewer. Looks like I got a couple corrected errors, but otherwise it seems like it's pretty stable. Let's run Heaven real quick, just because that's gonna generate a lot of chatter. And we'll see if that generates any PCI Express bus errors. All right, so Heaven's running in the background. Let's go over here, and let's refresh. Ah, look at that. We're still getting a few Windows hardware error event log issues. Not, not nearly as many as we were, but we're still getting a few. Yeah, it's pretty steady. I mean, it's not, it's not as, uh, it's maybe not as crazy as it was. All right, let's reboot and change the power management settings. Now we've disabled ASPM. Um, this is a kind of power management for PCI Express. On laptops, this is actually a good thing. This will save you power on your laptop. On a desktop, uh, it's a little less important. I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to lower the overall amount of power um, that the system is gonna use. But in this case, it may be causing some of our WHEA errors. Now, um, for the rate of errors that we're getting uh, now, where it's just a, a, a small number of intermittent errors, none of those errors have actually led to any crashes. Um, what sort of precipitated this was uh, uh, when we were first getting started, the chipset drivers um, meant that whatever was going on underneath the hood, um, that those errors were being generated at a dramatic pace. And so running the thing overnight, like running a burn-in test, running some other stuff, it would crash. But this is also a problem that we've seen on many, many other brands of motherboard. And it's really interesting because we first encountered it in Linux um, with Eric S. Raymond's system. And so it was, it's really been interesting to troubleshoot um, different CPUs, different processors. You know, he's using a Xeon with error correcting memory. This is an i7 X series with non error correcting memory. And uh, uh, it, it seems to be related to the PCI Express generation and also the power management, at least as far as WHEA goes on this particular platform. Um, but we've also in like server machines and workstations, uh, and hardware that was legitimately malfunctioning as opposed to just configuration issues um, generate the same types of errors. And so we thought it would be interesting for you guys to take a look. All right, so let's go check our Windows Event Viewer now that we've disabled ASPM. Looks like it's back. Looks like it's back in full force. Okay, if we dig a little deeper on this particular error, this device ID is actually the Gigabit Ethernet uh, hardware device ID. This is the... Uh, the Intel um, IG, IXGBE uh, device. And so for some reason, the Intel Gigabit Ethernet interface uh, is throwing all of these errors. So let's go back into the UEFI and disable one of the NICs. Now keep in mind that <laughs> these WHEA errors can actually be legitimate hardware problems. And so it may be that you need to RMA your motherboard. But this, you know, this problem really goes back to X79, and it was really never fully fixed on X79 on all motherboards. Most of the time, it was uh, it was able to be corrected with a, a UEFI update, but it can still be a little squirrely even on modern hardware. I'm going to go ahead and disable MCTP as well, PCIe Management Component Transport Protocol, just to see if that makes a difference. We can also drop these down to Gen 1, but I don't want to do that just yet. So we've got our two 540 LANs, that's the 10 gigabit ethernet. Let's go ahead and disable the gigabit ethernet as well while we're at it. We'll save and exit. Okay, let's take a look at the event viewer. Looking better, 8086-2F08. 8086 is Intel, 2F08, I'm not sure what that device is. 2F02 and 2F08. Oh wait, 2F02 is the gigabit ethernet adapter again. Now depending on your card and the particular hardware that you're running, it may be the case that there is no fix yet but this is something to keep an eye on. And sometimes it actually is a hardware problem, but sometimes it's actually a problem with just the UEFI and the configuration on the card. So it looks like the last set of changes were pretty stable. Let's run Heaven and see what happens. Looks pretty good. That's actually a pretty good result considering the versions of things that we're running on. So even though this is running in the background, we're not generating errors at nearly the rate that we were. So this is probably good enough for now. Um, this is sort of an edge case and sort of a weird situation. So, um, 
stay tuned. Different motherboards have uh, different levels of support, but all motherboards from all vendors uh, exhibit this issue. This is also happening not just with the X99 chipset, but with like the uh, the C602 chipset, the server grade chipset. Um, it supports multiple CPUs. It's really sort of interesting. I can't say that it's happening nearly as much on the on the C602 chipsets. It's actually not happening at all um, unless you are dealing with uh, a high performance graphics card. Um, as far as like RAID controllers, 10 gigabit Ethernet controllers, that kind of thing, generally are not generating these kinds of errors. When you're using like a Titan or you know a GTX 980 or even older graphics cards um, in a server configuration, like a dual socket um, Xeon, dual socket 2011 Xeon, uh, then you can see these, these same kinds of errors. Now, if you let this thing run and do your burning test and it's completely stable, it's probably okay that you have some errors in the WHEA log. Um, you know, you're not, it's not going to be perfect. And some of them are caused by um, software issues at a low level or, you know, handshake issues with the PCI Express, uh, like the PCI Express hand, uh, handshaking thing. So even with all that, we got two WHEA errors. Not bad. That's not going to cause any really egregious problems. It's something to keep an eye on. If after, however, you have a crash or other situation, you can look in here and see if you see any uncorrected WHEA errors. So instead of corrected hardware error has occurred, it will say uncorrected hardware error has occurred. Uh, you may even get a blue screen. And so let's talk a little bit about how you diagnose what causes a blue screen. Now I mentioned before that uh, we were doing some heavy testing without having the chipset drivers completely installed. Um, and we actually did get a blue screen. Um, but this was owing to uh, a completely wacky, uh, a completely wacky setup. It was our fault in the uh, Windows setup. But that's good because we've actually got a blue screen. Well, how do you, you know, what do you do with the blue screen? You just get the blue screen and there's, that's it. Well, there's some information about the blue screen in the Windows event log, but the best thing is a mini dump file. And so whenever you get the blue screen, Windows will generate a dump. Um, let me show you something to check to make sure that you actually have it set up to do that. Some OEMs disable this and I don't know why. So when you get a blue screen, it's good if it dumps debugging information. So if you go here um, and you go to startup and recovery and settings uh, and you want to do this. So write an event to the event log on system failure, automatically restart, and then automatic memory dump. So uh, this is probably what you want. You can also do a small memory dump, 256 kilobytes if you want, but automatic memory dump is fine. And it's going to tell you where it's going to put it. So it's system root, which is usually C colon backslash windows and then uh, memory.dmp, and you can overwrite that if you have any, an existing file. And so you want to be sure that this is set um, to ensure that that uh, you, you have a dump file to work with uh, should something happen. There's also a folder on your C drive, C Windows Mini Dump. And so in C Windows Mini Dump, uh, you have these, these DMP files here um, that will be created when your system blue screens, basically. Um, and so how do you look at those? What do you do with those? Well, it's called WinDBG. And WinDBG, oh, yeah, I disabled the internet connection. <laughs> WinDBG is part of the Windows um, software SDK. And so when you install it, you should have one of uh, one of these icons. I'm going to just run as administrator. You download these from Microsoft. It's part of like the Windows 8 software development kit. Uh, but there's a, another download that lets you just download the tools. Just grab that one. All right, so I've run it as administrator. I'm going to go to open crash dump. And then I'm just going to pick our mini dump file. All right. And so this is going to tell us, we're going to get some messages in here that like we don't have debugging symbols installed. So this would actually let you take apart um, the executables that were involved if you had the debugging symbols and the debugging information uh, installed so that you could actually figure out what caused the crash. But in our case, it doesn't really matter too much. Most of the time, the mini dump thing can figure out what actually caused the crash. So once you opened it, we just skip to the end, and it says, probably caused by NTOS KRNL.exe. Well, in that case, that's actually the Windows NT kernel, which is sort of the core of uh, Windows and the thing that manages uh, uh, programs and access to the hardware and the physical uh, like interface of Windows to the raw hardware. Um, and so that the crash occurred there 
is really sort of unusual. I mean, Windows NT is fairly well hardened. Uh, this is almost always a device driver issue, a device driver doing something that it shouldn't, a, a device driver corrupting memory space. Um, it could be bad memory, um, like memory that is uh, throwing errors uh, and that kind of thing. And so when you see errors or blue screens that are caused by NTOS KRNL.exe, it is almost always down to a driver for your hardware, bad hardware, or um, bad memory. And so this is just another uh, another uh, piece of evidence that something went horribly wrong on the WHEA side of things, and we got an uncorrectable error. And indeed, that's what actually happened when we were setting up when we were first setting up the machine, installing old drivers, installing incorrect drivers, not having the correct chipset drivers for the platform. Um, and there was plenty of warning for that in the Windows Hardware Event Log. And so, hopefully, uh, with this sort of quick overview of the Windows Hardware Event Log. Uh, or the Windows event log in general and how it interfaces with your hardware and the programs on your system, you will have leveled up in your understanding of how Windows uh, deals with errors, where that's logged at so you can go look at it, and how to troubleshoot blue screens even after the blue screen is over. It's like, oh, I hope I get another blue screen so I can write down the error. No, that's not necessary. <laughs> Just go go load the mini dump and see what it was. Go to the event viewer and see what the actual um, crash was. The next time the system starts up, it's going to have that in there. Another thing that you can do is if your system is down and and has crashed, you can actually open uh, your your hard drive on another machine. You can pull your hard drive out and put it in another computer, go get the mini dump and look at it that way. And so the Windows system event log is also stored similarly. It's in Windows System 32 and then Win EVT and then logs. And so in here are all of your log files for the whole system. So if the system is so badly knackered that you can't even get into Windows, you can put the drive in another machine, go to the, uh, well, assuming that you don't have BitLocker installed, um, and then it, you have to jump through some hoops to decrypt your hard drive if you do. Um, you can browse the logs folder, and you can browse the, uh, the Windows folder to get the mini dump and to grab the logs. And then on another Windows computer to open these logs, all you got to do is double click on the file. It'll open them in Event Viewer, and then you can take a look. And so, you know, here's our application log. If we go, come back over here and we do system, system is by and large the one that you want most of the time. We open up system, bam, there we are. And so now I'm in saved logs as opposed to system logs because Windows thinks it's opened, you know, another copy of, of an event log from another system or whatever. Even though I pulled it from system 32, it's not very smart. You can't, you got to look over it. Well, hopefully that's been enough of a crash course in the Windows uh, log, the Windows logging facility and how to make sense of the Windows logging facility that you will be able to troubleshoot the next time you have a, a problem with Windows or a problem with Windows being a stable or a graphics problem or a problem with a new platform or the next time you have a blue screen, <laughs> the next time one of your friends is having a blue screen, it's like, hey, I know how to deal with that. I can probably get some more information about it. So there you go. Till next time, see you on the forums. <laughs>